Hello, everybody. Simon Reinhardt here. Um, welcome to this banter blitz with me. And um, yeah, I just noticed um, that uh, this will be uh, quite an interesting thing. It will be maybe also uh, for me a bit of a long two hours because I assume that um, many here are um, interested in uh, memory techniques and in as much as possible and in that regard. And I will definitely be there to answer questions. And um, also, of course, um, I will try to play a bit of blitz here and there so uh, that you might also have a chance to perhaps beat one of uh, the people who are taking part in these banter blitzes. So um, let me just very quickly try to also, because I am at the moment here at my um, analysis window, so I, I um, assume that all of you are seeing this. Um, and um, I will just, um, I would like at first to um, introduce to you um, something um, and also a good first question by someone here on uh, Twitch, I think, who needs memory when, when you have Google? This is, of course, a great question also for me to answer here at the start. Um, yeah, the point is that um, I guess nobody can really Google their chess moves during a chess game. If they do that online or so, then of course it's not an ideal and on a real board anyway. So as a bit of an introduction, um, chess is of course something that is very much influenced by your understanding. Chess is not only or exclusively or even in the majority a game of memory, of course. But uh, the point is that you have many situations, um, be it like in chess or also in jobs, daily life, study, university, where you simply need to memorize things in high detail. And um, this does not really work if um, you don't have the right approach. So, um, of course, Many people have been as successful and all of the great chess players in the past most probably did not use memory techniques for their, for their own chess. But the point is that almost all of these great players had a fantastic memory anyway. And the point is we are like talking about what can you do to, um, to memorize stuff in higher detail. And um, sometimes it is simply extremely hard, even if you're using pages that like help you with um, your memory and do this in, in a great way with uh, spaced repetition and so on. Sometimes simply this does not completely help. And maybe sometimes sidelines are a bit confusing and uh, the, the same moves are um, appearing all of the time. And you simply cannot get track of all of these opening moves or maybe also about these end game maneuvers and everything. And um, I would like to, to start quickly with um, a short illustration of um, a few variations, not, not very long, but um, you might see what I am talking about. So I um, assume that you see my um, analysis board here. Let me like just quickly take a look at this. Okay, that should, that should work. And um, I would um, then start, let's, let's see it uh, starts with uh, c4 and c6, knight f3, d5, typical knight f3, d5, ready stuff with um, a bit of a more uh, solid center. And um, then of course, g3 and knight f6, bishop g2 and uh, c4. So by uh, the way, I'm not playing from some uh, file I have here, but this, of course, I've also tried to memorize before, just as an illustration. And uh, the point is, um, from, from that point on, there are, of course, a huge number of, uh, let's say, potential approaches. Um, and I think in, According to theory, only castles is a really viable try. I mean, I don't want to insult people who play any of these sidelines. But apart from, from uh, this, of course, white needs to get the pawn back somehow. So either they play queen to queen to c2, or they play knight to a3 immediately, or uh, they play um, a4, or they play 
um, knight, knight to e5 and all of the stuff. But these are basically uh, sidelines. Um, I am already getting more questions here um, on Twitch, and I will try to, to answer this after I have made this short illustration. So at the point is, of course, um, if white plays um, here the absolute main line with castles, then what you can do is um, you play this, and if they try to get other pawn back like, like that, then you, you have this. And basically, this is already in a sideline because this would transpose to the one main line that I would be showing here just as an illustration. And this is the more common move. You do this, you do this, and then you try to defend the pawn because um, white has not played a4, you try to stick to other pawn. And then this goes on and this goes on and so on and so on. I will not bore you with like 20 or 30 minutes of main lines, but the real interesting thing here is that the side lines, apart from um, short castles, can be quite confusing. And this is, for example, here with the queen to c2, because you will see the move knight, knight a3 countless times. You have here, for an example, now a sideline, queen to, queen to c2, can uh, defend it here. And then you have this knight move, and this, and e4 takes, 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 and the black is already better. So we, we see knight to knight to g5, maybe it's not the best try, but knight a3 pops up again. Queen to d5, 0, 0, here. And now it's already a quite comfortable position because we, for the moment, have uh, defended to the pawn. And um, we might always, um, from uh, discovery of the knight, go to c5 with our queen and um, then defend the pawn, and so on, and so on. But here, the best move still this. This is just a transposition to the main line that we have just seen. And this here is already a bit of a problem because you get to be three and black should be slightly, slightly better, I guess. I'm, at least that's what my um, engine told me when I was taking a look of that before the banter blitz. But you can also play this again, always uh, the same motive, uh, knight against the bishop. And here you cannot do the, the whole thing with that you go bishop to d5 and then e4, but you go here, you go to g4, takes, takes, here, here, d4, and this here. And I'm um, in this position, it's like still possible that you go to f5 or that you go look to look to c8, which is a bit more aggressive. Okay, this is all still clear, but the point is now we have taken care of queen to c2 side of the queen to c2 sideline. There's also a knight a3 sideline on move five. And here you and here you can play b5, what you could not do before, um, due to uh, several things. Here b5, knight to e5 might be a bit of a trick, but a6 is quite a cool move. Knight to c6, queen to b6. And now that is the best white, white can do, basically. And you have a strong pawn center. And if they try to do stuff like this, you're already winning. OK. Um, there's also a4, um, a move that we have also seen before, but on move 7. Now it's on to move 5. What, what are you what are you doing here? Now you play g6. So it's again a difference. And um, then you might then comes knight to e5, maybe, and then queen to d4. So these like small difference, queen to queen to d5, of course, does not work here. And you have queen to queen to d4. And if the knight moves back, then you might even go to c5. So it's a it's the it's the same motive, but it's um, a bit of a different move order. And we also have to get to our last thing here, knight to e5, here the same motive, queen to e4, back, and the queen goes to c5. And now here it's like rather clear, you have um, a clear plan of action, bishop goes to g4, 
and you develop. And this is just a very short thing. I could do this with the, the opening set that I have learned, could do this for a very long time. But I mean, this is not the, the interesting thing here. The, the interesting thing here is that um, you can get all of this totally under control, know which, when, night to a uh, night to night to a three happens, and um, how this this all goes, with uh, the help of memory techniques. And it's not really more difficult to do this in a quite higher scale, like um, times time times ten or so. You just need to keep track of the, the whole thing. So um, I think this this very small illustration shows that similar moves can can be tricky. And because in particular, if it's a rather sharp position or if really every move matters, then you have a lot of sidelines and maybe each sideline is answered a bit differently. Um, this would be basically my illustration. In um, a few minutes, I would um, start also doing some blitz games here um, just to, to answer also um, one more of the question that came here on Twitch. I will also take care of the Chess24 questions just in a short moment. Um, there someone says, um, is it true that many of the top players have a photographic memory? This is a quite a good question. Um, I, I know that, or at least that's what you read, that a lot of top players have a fantastic memory, in particular for chess, maybe not for each topic, but definitely for chess moves and for chess patterns and for the whole chess uh, geometry. And I mean, there's a story about Magnus Carlsen that he knew all of the uh, capitals of the world with five or maybe even with three or with, I don't know. And um, that, and I think uh, Gary Kasparov memory is of course absolutely legendary. And you just need to talk with any top player and they know uh, games from years past and so on. But a really photographic memory, according to definition, in my opinion, is something that you can really make a photographic snapshot of something in your mind. And so you see a page in a book and you look at it for one or two seconds and then you close your eyes and you can see, okay, in line five, there is word seven and everything. And according to my information, at least, this doesn't exist. This has not been really proven. I think the, the only study which has seemed to indicate that this was true was in the 70s or 80s. And the guy who did the study only had one participant or something. I hope I'm not saying something wrong. And the participant was his girlfriend. So, um, so this was a bit dubious. And it has not been proven and it doesn't seem to work. You, you can get close-ish with memory techniques and with investing more time than one or two seconds. But the question is um, to which extent you want to do this. Um, user, uh, forget about what, what's the last thing you uh, forgot. Uh, Simon, so Reinhardt is my, is my last name. I mean, you usually, you uh, still forget things in life because this, this whole memory techniques thing is something that you use voluntarily. You, you only use it when um, you, you want. And um, I think it's also not not the worst that sometimes you forget things. Maybe you want to forget um, memories that are not so pleasant. And I think forgetting is an integral part of, of life. Um, I think the important thing is just that you are not forgetting the things that you want to remember. And this is where this, this whole thing can definitely help you. Now, just one moment. We have now the first 20 minutes are like over and in the first 20 minutes I wanted to have this analysis board and now we can also go and play some blitz and then I also need to take a short look in order to make sure that I can also um, go to the um, chat of my own stream I'm doing this for uh, the first time here sorry please be please be patient with me I'm doing my best and um, if I see this here. I hope I don't open my own stream, but I should be able to see the chat. Yes, okay. I see the chat here, nice, okay. I see also many, many questions here. I will try to answer the questions here and I will um, I, I will also accept Emma challenge soon, just um, in order to be clear in my, my own Blitz games. I mean, I'm also playing in Emma team 
in the German Landesliga, I think the, the highest league in my, my state at least. And I've been working on my openings also during this whole COVID situation. So people will be watching who I might be playing next season when, whenever this might be, maybe in the next decade or whatever. And um, so I will not really play all of my like openings or so. I might uh, go for sidelines rather rather easily. So please be gentle and don't say, okay, he went out of book after move five. What is like happening with this memory champion? And um, this is a bit deliberately because um, I guess um, my team would not be so happy if I were to only play all of my main openings here and not even uh, the sidelines. So all the blitz section would be rather for a bit of fun. But there will be happening. Um, I hope I'm allowed to, to say this. The uh, Chess Base India interview will um, appear, I guess, even maybe as early as this week, which um, I hope will be like interesting in that regard, where I was like quizzed about many different topics with uh, regards to memory. And um, the, the interviewer was so cruel to really gave me a huge file of the French whenever, like 800 moves so far, 800 white and black half moves, or even more extremely sharp variations. And I should <laughs> learn these two files yeah, with um, h4 and um, queen, queen takes c3 um, until the interview. And the guy really quizzed me for, I think, one and a half hours. <laughs> and so I was really had to recall freely all of the moves and all of the sidelines. So, and he will give some examples in this interview, which uh, should appear. So if you want to see me really recalling opening moves in, in depth and everything, the, this, this interview might be your place to go. Now, after 20 minutes, before I play my first game, I will take a look in the chat and we'll try to answer questions. Okay. Um, Hello, Norder Hour. Thank you very much. Um, okay, first question. Hello, Simon. Hello, CP Koitert. And uh, Jürgen Mager, maybe with a bit of um, a wink, says, how many brain cells do you have more than us? I think um, most probably not a single one, because this is basically uh, technique based, and it's a skill that you can acquire. So it's not like, I mean, I have appeared in um, a number of like TV shows or so, and there's always the thing, yeah, and it's like uh, presented like you are some superhuman genius, and it's a, and there there are no techniques, but it's just like almost like um, stuff that you see at a fair, like a guy having a huge um, a huge mustache and uh, lifting lifting weights and stuff like this, and it's not like. Um, this this kind of thing but i mean um it, it is something that you can train and with the right technique and with the with the right guidance you can really um excel in i mean you don't need to get to a level that you are a memory champion or a world memory champion but getting to a level that is useful for you to to fight this decay of your natural memory which is super fast um and you really have some more stable memorization regarding all of the chess information that you want to memorize, this can be achieved rather quickly with uh, practice and with the right instruction. OK, going to the next question. Um, challenge time, I would be happy if you challenged me three and two. Uh, but since I'm only saying this now, I, I will also accept uh, three uh, zero. I mean, I'm. Also, of course, playing Blitz online, but I like three, two more because I think anything with no increment is simply not real chess, in my opinion, if you have the much better position and your opponents can simply make, make moves. Uh, this is something I know that many people do it in some YouTube streams, but it's not my, my idea of chess. So three, two or five, two also would, would be cool. Um, okay. Hello, Zealand Zen. And I'm still catching up. Um, Dutch Defender is asking, do we know how good a chess player he is? Uh, my um, best national um, rating in Germany, the DWZ or DWZ, uh, is uh, 2,249. And um, currently, I am at 2,145. But I mean, um, this is because one uh, a few bad decisions in my two last league games. So it, it is still a bit volatile because I've only 
Um, I'm only in I'm a chess club since the end of 2018. Uh, before that, I was only playing like online and all, um, having longer stretches of not playing at all. But once I um, got into a chess club, I really took this this whole chess and memory thing more seriously and also tried to prepare myself with it and it helped. So um, I hope to return to above 2200 soon. I don't have an ELO rating because I've not played in an ELO rated tournament, but I hope when this whole COVID situation is over that I will also play in some nice opens and get my field rating. And usually the German rating, you, you can add 100 points to it and roughly get what you would have in ELO. So my ELO estimation without saying that I am so like strong would be about 2 to 50 to 2 to 3 maybe. So, but this is hard to say. I don't know. Um, maybe 2 to 50 and I still need to improve, of course. But it's huge fun and chess is great. So let's see. Okay, um, here the next question by Norda Aue. Um, to what degree is memory training helpful for calculation and, visual and visualization? That's a very good question. Um, just maybe a short introduction, what we are like talking about, because there was someone in chat who um, said that he has no idea what I'm talking about and what the why the whole thing is interesting. Um, what I'm like talking about is there, there is something called memory techniques. And there is, uh, if you want a short introduction about that, I have um, a TED talk or a TEDx talk that, that I had in 2016. You can find it on YouTube if you Google my name and TEDx. And um, there I give an 18 minute introduction about the, the whole thing. There is like one very um, old and ancient and honorable memory technique is the method of loci where you use locations in order to memorize information. And I think it's no big secret that this is one key element also of uh, the method that I will be teaching in my course on coaches and that I'm also teaching outside of uh, the coaches format. But my coaches course is um, online and the first course about chess and memory techniques and about how to memorize openings better, end games better, be, um, how it can be helpful with calculation also, remembering ideas, motives, and so on, is scheduled for the weekend of the 17th and 18th. It is It already has sold out, which is super cool. I had not expected this. And uh, because the demand seems to be quite high, a uh, second course is will be scheduled for the next weekend, 24 and 25 of April. And um, there is a waiting list. I think the booking should open today or tomorrow. So already nine people on the waiting list, um, be quick. And what happens after the second course, I don't know. But the basic point is that about this memory technique, this, this, these techniques help you um, very to very clearly memorize information in sequence. And um, this you can also see when, when it says World, World Memory Champion. And there, there's a, a thing called memory sports, where people come together for memory tournaments. Sounds extremely nerdy. It's in a way nerdy. I don't like the word so much because usually it's used by people who maybe don't like what you're doing. But um, it, it is fun. And it is, of course, a mind sport. You either get stuff on paper and you memorize numbers, names and faces, words, and then you recall it. And it's a bit like a decathlon. You get points for a sort of standard. And then at the end, the guy with the most or the girl with uh, the most points. We have, I think, four girls in the top 10. So this is super cool and um, gets uh, the win. And um, I'm like world champion in a format where you compete digitally against another person. You only have one minute of memorization for cards, like in a deck of cards, which I usually do like in 22 seconds or for eight digits, also around 20 seconds. And um, Names and faces, 30, which I sometimes get correct, and international is a bit harder. And you get the drift and you play against these people. It's memory leak, memoryleak.com. Like memory and leak, it's super interesting. I would also tell you to or uh, recommend you to take a look there. And um, these memory techniques can not only, of course, help you to memorize moves, which is, of course, a core part of my memory course, but they can also help you with calculation because 
it's clear that at least my my experience is um, when when you are calculating something, um, it it gets tricky if you have too many variations that you need to keep track of, and then you get confused. It's a typical short time memory overload. It's uh, the same when you try to cram too much information in in your brain. And you get confused before a test or so. That's also similar. So you have this one variation, then it branches out and it branches out again, and you just lose track. Or what I know, if I am not using techniques in that regard, I don't know whether a piece has already moved, whether it has been eliminated, because usually you look at the board as it is now. And there this can also help. And um, these, these whole techniques are very reliant on visualization and on images also you put images on these locations and i can only say for for me this has definitely helped my own ability to visualize things because you're simply training this graphics processor in your brain you might say um now catching up again um I think Dutch, Dutch Defender said it gets worse when you grow older, trust me. I think he's talking about memory. Yeah, but the, the cool thing is that these memory techniques are super helpful um, also in order to counter, not like counter aging, but to like help you when, when you see that your natural memory is not up to par anymore. I mean, you can see I'm like 42. I hope I'm not looking like 42, maybe I am. And I'm like still competing um, in this memory league format where I'm like a two times world champion, um, still competing with um, the two or three best in the world. And I just yesterday won my quarterfinal there in the first league and will now in the semifinal play against the current world champion in the classical format. That's what you do on paper or what you also do like digitally. And I'm still going going strong and many people there are like half my, half my age and training for five or six hours a day. I don't have this time, but I try to have proper technique, and so it can help you there. It can help you at chess and everywhere. Next question. Um, okay. Good. Just just one moment. Okay. Now, um, of course, you can also if. That is your personal ambition. You can, of course, also um, try to um, try to play uh, blindfold with these kinds of techniques. I don't know whether Teimur Gareyev, which last time I checked, had the world record for most blindfold games, also uses. Some, I think he uses something similar, um, but not exactly the same. And I mean, of course, this is also something. Playing like blindfold games is the same problem as you have. With calculation, you need to keep track of many things, and your brain is not really suited to keep track of many things at once. You can only focus at one thing usually. And if you don't think of the other thing, um, it decays or it gets less strong and it gets uh, reduced to the most important things. That's what your brain does. And reducing detailed information to less details is, of course, a problem. That's a problem for chess and also for university tests and like for, for any kind of environment. Um, so I see Dutch, Dutch Defender wants to give me a lesson I won't forget. Let's see. I mean, if you beat me, you beat me. I have no idea what's, what's your strength. OK, let's see. Maybe it's also just a nice ploy to get me to accept your challenge. Hello, Ochas More, 28. Um, and yeah, um, Ahmed Ishtiak is asking any tips how to memorize 32 lines from Jan's chessable course. Um, of course, as, as I said, I can't go into too much detail um, because I would basically cannibalize my, my whole course. Sorry for being such um, a tease here. Um, but um, as I've also said in my first chess based interview and also um, what I'm also saying here, um, there, there is definitely, there are definitely possibilities. You can, with the help of the method of loci and a specific methods, what you do with the moves and also what you do with branching variations, which is the biggest problem. Uh, you, you can, you can like, with not necessarily more time than you need for normally learning moves, definitely get this under, under control. Um, I think um, the, the most problematic thing about chess variations, which I guess many people know, is um, this feeling you have looked at 20 or 30 variations, maybe on chessable, 
am a day before you have also played it with like spaced repetition and you think you get it down but maybe the, the day after you still get it down but a few days later even if you land it properly you will know it better with chessable definitely than if you were just looking at a book or clicking through the moves chessable is fantastic in that regard but maybe you will still see that it's a bit hard to keep track of these sidelines or of these integral of, of these a bit more intric intricate variations yeah. and um, then you might need something that helps you over this bump and this what what i really like about memory techniques is just like imagine that um you are like having um i can maybe guide you to a very short intro about this maybe everybody watching here can just think about their own home where they're sitting now where they're sitting quite a lot during the last month during the last year and um try to get five different locations there a location not too small not too big the table would be a good start i for example would take my table that i have here in front of me maybe you see my couch here on the right side then the shelf with my trophies would be like already three then maybe my tv here and then the window in front of me and i already have five and now just like imagine that each of these locations is like something where, where you can store information where you can store info and data and let's say if you were able to store on each of these locations um, a word like a keyword or so for a specific text that you want to memorize or for a speech that you want to hold um, and you could perfectly go from the first word to the second to the third fourth and to the fifth which is the window without any problems and independently of how nervous you are um, then you could simply stand there, keep eye contact, and could like simply talk about things. That's what I, by the way, also did for my TEDx talk, uh, which was 18 minutes, which can be quite a long time to talk about stuff. I've not done it today because, I mean, it's a two-hour setting and I don't want to make this feel too like scripted. But, but there, I mean, if you take longer than 18 minutes for a TEDx talk, then they simply cut you. And your video that they will then publish will then stop there, which might be a bit embarrassing. So I really try to use, I think, 70 or 80 locations. And I put a word there and I connected it with the help of the techniques. And I could hold that speech nicely. And I also took um, a look at um, how other speakers at this event were like doing. They had extremely interesting topics and they also managed to get through what they wanted to say that I noticed some were quite nervous and they really struggled to get to the next point and it was a bit hard to see. And this is basically um, what like illustrates the problem of your natural memory. Like a natural memory is great for taking in information quickly, but it's bad for structuring information. And structuring information is crucial for chess, is crucial for any kind of learning and it's crucial for holding a speech. And if you don't have some kind of framework that can guide you through that, then you are simply depending on whether your brain can give you the next association. You go from this to this to this, and you just hope that you can um, go from one point to the next and then struggle to find your way through your speech or through your exam or through your chess game. It's always the same, I think. I mean, I'm no, I'm no neuroscientist, but my personal theory is basically, which I think I've also read in some studies, that the brain is always trying to simplify things. That's your natural brain. It wants to get the information across as efficiently as possible. And what it deems not important, it uh, simplifies and converts into a bullet point. Just think of you reading a super interesting newspaper article. Someone asks you one minute after you have finished, you might be able to talk about the article in length. Now go 24 hours later, after you've slept, after everything has settled down, you will notice that you maybe know four or five bullet points, unless your memory, your national memory is extremely good. And that's the same thing that happens with chess moves. If you have memorized chess moves in great detail, a day later or two, 
it almost independent of what you do, it can just reduce the amount of memory decay, you will notice that you know the motives, you know the ideas, but the sidelines and all the moves, that's the biggest problem. And that's where these memory techniques would like start. They are not to replace your natural memory. So I'm not saying you only use memory techniques and understanding is not worth anything. You keep your full chess understanding, of course, and you just use this for the specific spots where your natural chess understanding and your chess knowledge does not help you because it's simply maybe too tactical or too complex. Okay, let's check the time. Already 40 minutes, it's crazy. Okay, let me see. Next questions. Um, um, so Jürgen also asked me if I don't have a FIDE title. Um, no, I don't, because I've never played in an ELO-rated event. So I've only played in uh, the German leagues since I only started playing in a club in 2018. I was in a club for half a year, I think, at the beginning of the 90s, 91 or 92. You see, I'm an old man with 42. And I was 13, and I think I played for half a year there, and then nothing. And I think I started playing chess only in 98 after school, when I moved out from, from home and got my first desktop. and desktop PC and the internet was like cropping up and I think I was playing on chess.net, which doesn't even exist anymore, I guess. And um, yeah, so I have no idea whether I'm good enough to get a FIDE title. Probably the answer is no, it's not. But um, yeah, um, I will just try to get as good as possible. And after all, chess is about fun. I mean, all of this obsession with like rating, of course, rating is a motivation. But I mean, people get so salty often when they are like losing and all of this tilting business and so, which I luckily don't really understand that people get, get so tilted that they then play super bad moves for a number of games. I know that even grandmasters are doing this. I mean, maybe I've simply went through these school of hard knocks with these memory tournaments, which I'm doing since 2005. Because if you are there angry about one discipline that didn't work and you lose your focus, then you can't forget everything because your opponent does not like sleep. So you just need to learn that you just go with the flow. You don't have the full influence over everything you do, even if you are perfectly prepared. You just, and you should not make yourself and your own happiness dependent on the result of your game or something. That's just because A, it's not much fun and b the problem is it also does not lead to the best performance in a bit of a cynical way by the way i'm also offering courses on peak performance so i've also pitched this in a very subtle way okay next question um so we will soon go to the blitz games dutch defender and Jürgen Mager says, come on, Simon, after the ads, let the games begin, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Absolutely. A monkey king. Yeah, I guess the monkey king. I mean, you have struggled with the gods, so you should be able to remember much. Um, um, no, I will not play blindfold <laughs> because I have not any experience with it and I would have to have prepare some journeys and so on. So maybe i can try to do this next time um and this would be an option maybe and office morris says please start <laughs> okay <laughs> okay with three red angry faces then office morris we will start um okay let me scroll through um just one more question to be answered by first night, uh, one minute before. Um, um, yet it uh, basically is focused on chess, but with the techniques, you can memorize everything that you are, that you want to memorize during your days in job or in at the university, because it's quite flexible. It does not teach these things in a particular, but it is a very flexible approach. Okay, 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 people are, um, People are getting a bit impatient um, and people want to play Blitz. I think I need to oblige the masses 
and accept my first player. Let's see if I even find Ojas More. Yes, who wanted to play? Now we play. Ojas More not moving. I hope they are still there. They have not withdrawn their challenge. So I am ready. I guess I will give you a bit more time because you were so eager to play. Three, two, one, zero, and abort. So then let's get back. And let's see the next challenge. How about we play? Um, Let's see, maybe a 3.2 challenge. Yeah, Michi, 2011. I also must not forget that I am only allowed to play against premium members. So, Karo Khan. Yep. And by the way, as, as I said, I will not play book moves throughout and might play sidelines rather early even and also i'm not used to talking and playing at all and now the question is can he sacrifice here Interesting approach here. Playing on band tablets. Okay. Yeah, also um, my blitz feeder um, was like I think from quite a few blitz blitz tournaments. Um, I'm not even sure how how many. Um, but I don't think it were much, like one or two or so, and um, it, it was a while back. So I also switched my, my openings from one key move to another, um, but only in the beginning of 2020. So I guess this was all before I got a bit stronger. I mean, on Lee Chess, for an example, I'm about 2,250. Okay. Uh, this is a little tricky here. Okay, concentrate on playing now. Still have not castled. At least I managed to castle. Okay. Yeah, someone man um, to memorize 500 digits of pi. Yeah, I mean in our memory competitions, just as a comparison, it is not un, um, the the best memorized in five minutes, 500 something digits. So my best is um, 464 digits in uh, five minutes with quite a tough penalty rule. Okay, still tricky, everything. Let's see. It's so interesting when you really know that many people are watching you, <laughs> it's much tougher that you don't want to blunder. Usually, I don't know this feeling. Okay. By the way, my Norwegian flag is, I think, just a joke. I think I changed it when Magnus Carlsen had his band tablets because I assumed he might challenge me or he might accept my challenge then more. So I have no Norwegian ancestors that I know of. Okay, interesting. Uh, 
my opponent disconnected. I hope they will reconnect soon. And please also chat, yeah. Um, please give me always indication um, that you would prefer me to play more blitz or answer more questions. I can gladly um, do what you wish. This is this is for you. Uh, but of course, I mean, blitz for me is easiest because I just play blitz. Maybe it can be a bit embarrassing because I am maybe not as strong as you would like. But um, let's see, can I win? The exchange now, or do I run into something? No, it should work, right? No, no, no it, should, it should work, yeah? I think it should work. Um, Alexa Morningstar, I've been playing chess. I mean, if one is really exact since I think, I mean, I've learned it, I have no idea, six or seven, but I never really played it much. Just like very amateurish games, never in um, a club. Yeah, sure, this was supposed to come, but I thought I could simply take and still win the exchange. Yeah, this rook I can also take. So what's the big idea? And I mean, now I think I just need to, okay, be tricky. But let's bring the other rook into the game, f6, either g6 or even queen e1. But I think after queen e1, he maybe has uh, bishop to f1. But after bishop f1, I could play queen f2 and threaten mate. Uh, it's a bit flashy, but g6 would be super safe. Ah, who cares? And now the idea is if he moves the bishop again, I have rook to e1. And this should work, right? I mean, of course, he can still try to uh, shut it all down with knight e2. Um, yeah, but uh, this I can simply, uh, can I? Can I simply take? Hmm. Takes, takes, takes. The rook is hanging, so he can threaten mate. Yeah, sure. Let's take it. Okay. Ooh, won my first game. Ah, nice. Okay, back to the tablets. Yes, I was in the uh, Netflix documentary. Yes, um, the Memory Games documentary was um, absolutely interesting and a great experience. So, um, so as SCC Chess asks me whether I, uh, whether memory techniques allow me to be um, a neural network like Alpha Simon, but um, I guess I will stick with my approach to chess and simply learn from understanding stuff. And I think if, even if I played stock, for one million games. Um, it's questionable whether it might help me so much. It might be a test for my confidence because it might be one one million clubberings, but or clubberings. Okay, now I see um, our friend Ochas More has challenged again. Let's give him another chance. I never like these banter blitzers who always give people only one chance and say, okay, bad luck. <laughs> no, it's like uh, just a joke, but. He wanted to play, and let's see that maybe he can. I hope he moves now. Ahas or Oyas More, I'm not sure. You're from India. I'm not sure to pronounce it, sorry. Um, if you're there, you can move. It's your game, and it's your chance. Yes, and there we start. OK, also this here. A friend from my chess club always plays the Mora against me. And it's really nice, okay. Okay. So let me check. D6, 
95. And after castles, you take on c6. Got it. Um, f6. You might have bishop c4, but I think it's not such a big problem because I would simply go to h8 and then take care of the whole thing. Or play b5. Or even knight to a5, also a possibility. And as long as he doesn't have f4, any kind of lever, and as the center is closed, I should have enough time for all these shenanigans. Um, yep. And now probably bishop to c4, king to h8. Okay, he doesn't even play it. Hmm. Yeah, then let's develop my final piece and let's check what we can do here. So maybe knight to d4. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Again, knight to d4, potentially. Question is, I also can think about a6, b5. Um, can also think about f5, opening the long diagonal. Could be super interesting. Maybe even g takes. OK, let me just do this. And if he plays knight to g5, then I just retreat to d7. Yeah. But I mean, I connect my rooks. Daniel King would be very happy. And I'm already threatening e4, I think. Ain't I? Threatening e4. Yeah. So, all just because my rooks were connected. No, not, not really, of course. Please don't take this too literally. But now after takes on e4, I mean, maybe rook to b1 or c1 or anything, but I guess he's already thinking about a kingside attack. But I mean, I have the dark, oh, okay, wow. Okay, so he's trying to get to the dark squares. Um, okay. So interesting, when you're playing here, you're always thinking you're blundering something. What a, what a cool, di interesting dynamic. I'm really tempted by the sacrifice on f3. Yeah, I mean, takes on f3, takes knight to d4, should be winning, right? Yeah, that looks quite winning. I can take on h3. He has no way to come to my king. And I mean, as long as, okay, he can give a check with the rook. But as long as f6 is defended, it should be okay. Yeah. But this is a fork. And after this, I can play bishop to e4. And f4, knight takes h4. OK. Yeah, but this loses an exchange again, right? And now I'm also I'm getting to, OK. Mm. Yeah, then. Let's take care of these weaknesses. Um, what do I do now? Uh, yeah, maybe just go here and then take the e-file. And this here. And I mean, once I exchange queens, of course, it is over. Uh, he's threatening mate. But if I go here, this should be strong. Taking on h7 doesn't bring, it doesn't lead to anything. And simply going for e2 should win the game. 
Yeah, I've tried the new play zone, but um, I tested it. Um, when, when I tested it, I did not get a game. So sorry, don't want to make it seem bad, but I thought it makes sense to play, to like just accept uh, challenges. But the new play zone uh, surely is something very cool. So, yeah, the point is this threatens mate and should be over because king to h4 is also mate. The pawn on g4 is okay, he takes. Yeah, but I mean, um, I have more time and. Um, this is also then time to resign. But of course, um, maybe a premium member is not always right, but every player has the right to fight until the end. And But I hope once I take the rook, he might give up. It's uh, not pre-recorded, no, which you see from my answer here. And so now you will see a oh, world well, memory champion struggling to checkmate. Yeah, let's take away the flight squares. No stalemate traps. And so threatening mate, not yet. And I guess easiest is simply to create a new queen. <laughs> what a splendid display of chess. Okay, now let's check it. Thanks a lot, Rogers Mora. Yes, paid actors and scripted content. Absolutely, I see the Bobby Fischer fraction is the Bobby Fischer faction is on. Yes, I am paid a lot, and I hope to win the chess Oscar for my performance here. No, but uh, really, it's like just me being here for the first time, having been quite nervous in the beginning because I'm like watching Ben Tablets my, myself since in a few years, and I love the whole format and so on. And people are already. Pointing out uh, mismates, yes, might be quite possible. <laughs> okay, um, now let's say um, thank you, Thomas Nordberg. Um, and let's see if there are any other questions. Let's also check the time. First hour is over, still, a, still one more hour to go. Um, and um, so he made it. Pinky overlooked mate in one. Just resign. Okay. Um, yes, sure. I'm um, appreciated. Thank you for every game of us. And now let's see whom I will play next. Maybe Dangerous Right with a 3.2 game. I'm only getting black. Are people only challenging me with the white? People challenge me with random colors, please. So maybe we get a Banco Gambit. No, we don't get a Banco Gambit. We get one of these slides. OK. Um, and let's play it like if I had played knight f3, c4, and e3. Um, and just develop. And yeah. Hmm. I mean, if my if my if my bishop were on uh, g g seven, uh, it would be a terror structure. Of course, if I were also white, yeah. Uh, but there, my knight on c six or c three wouldn't be ideal. I would rather play differently. I need to see where, how I develop my bishop, and I think let's just go for the isolated pawn. And let's see what we can do. So, 
Okay, but this weekend's before. Okay, now my idea would basically be b6, bishop b7, and see what happens. Okay, this is supposed to prepare d5. Uh, okay, show me. Hmm. I guess after bishop b, b7, I should be more than all right. Bishop b7, rook to c8 against the bishop, then a knight to d5, and then I can see what I do about the isolated pawn. I mean, if I can can get in stuff like bishop b7 and bishop takes on f3, surely I will, I will do this. Kids, if you are dealing with an isolated pawn, exchange all of your minor pieces and then win the heavy pieces ending. Um, yeah. Okay, should still be okay. He can still play. I mean, as long as I prevent him from moving pawn to d5, I should always be slightly better, I hope. Question is what am I doing next? Mm. The f knight or the b knight to d4. I mean, I like the b4 square, but I feel that I need to keep something close to my king. Um, this looks weird. This looks strange. Mm, yeah, okay, but this looks strange. Yeah, but okay, let's do it like this. First, I need to win the pawn, and I can still go to b4 with my bishop to take care of this nice square. I can also think about what I want to do with my queen. Maybe I even move my queen to b4. Hmm. Well, still a dangerous position, but luckily I have more time. Question is, if he doesn't move his bishop, do I want to take his bishop? Oh, he exchanges. Yeah, that is helpful. Same question. If he doesn't move the bishop, do I want to exchange the bishop? That's a good question. I think this is more active. No. Taking on e3 now would open up everything, but I could also exchange. He wouldn't have a anymore. Um, I don't know. Maybe I simply go for queen to e7. Connect rooks. The Daniel King school of chess. Daniel King, by, and by the way, totally love his YouTube videos. So entertaining. Um, okay, let's, let's see if there are any new questions. I can't see any new questions in the... Ah, okay. Oh, YouTube. There are many new questions. I completely overlooked this because it didn't move. Thank you, Boyan, for telling me to stay blessed. Tell us your memory palaces. Um, they are everywhere, mostly in my own city. Now I just need to try to play faster. Um, yeah, let's, let's do this. Hmm. Let's go here to defend the knight. Time is getting low, but we have increments, so it shouldn't be such a big problem. Um, yes, I was on the Netflix documentary, Yo, Yo Rotten or Rotten, on YouTube. Um, okay, takes. Interesting. Shall I? Yeah. Okay, then let's change here. And let's create some luft. Question is, how do I want to win this? 
can I win this? Yeah, let's let's do this. Threatening to win a pawn. B4 is better for the knight, definitely. And luckily on chess 24, uh, you cannot move without delay. So um, yeah, but um, okay. I, I'm also getting the first question regarding chess politics on Twitch. Um, I would like to stay as clear of that as possible of uh, one streamer you know, being uh, yeah, rude to another streamer and um, with all of this stuff. It's not part of what we're doing here. Dun, dun. Take some G3, G3, but OK, well, what the heck? Let's just do this. Oh, he doesn't take. That's, of course, great. So, and now I should have, ah, this is, of course, generous from my opponent to go into the ending here with me having being a pawn up. But of course, they will have compensation, definitely, with this great knight. But I have the great bishop. So let's see how we do this. I guess I should fix his pawns on dark squares, right? And there, I win on time. Thank you, Dangerous Right. My rating remains unchanged. Back to the Manta Blitz. Um, so, uh, Wesley Woodworth, what is the World Memory Champion? I've thought about that at the beginning. Um, um, yeah, uh, remembering the wife's anniversary um, is surely useful for any person. Um, but I don't have a wife, so I don't need to memorize her anniversary. No, it is about memory sports. You memorize stuff in a competition like a decathlon. Think about running and jumping, and we memorize names and um, words and numbers, and you get points. This is one way, like the classical format, and there's also the um, dual format, one against one, fast-paced, only one minute of memorization. The other, you can have up to 60 minutes memorizing numbers, which is tough. But with the other format, one against one, only on laptops, one minute, numbers, cards, faces, and this is what I personally like best, and where I also have my two world champion titles. And um, ich habe Jan noch nicht uh, meine memory tricks gelehrt. Also here, a uh, German viewer asked, did I already teach Jan my memory tricks? No, but I think it might be interesting to teach Radio Jan, uh, because, I mean, he is such a man of culture, a true Renaissance man, so I think Radio Jan would be the perfect person to teach this. And let's take a look at the banter blitz here again at the chat. Unrated. Um, OK, let's see. Thanks for the game. Thanks for the game. Um, and OK, and then next game, right? I don't see any new questions. Let's see. Um, random people are challenging unrated. Let's go for someone I might easily lose against. Serious Llama, 3-2, random. I might be my first loss on stream. Strong player. And he's moving. OK. Yep, the extremely well-loved London system. People are a big fan of this opening. And I usually play non standard stuff against this. Hmm. Is C4 a move? I mean, in some structures it is, but here you have already taken. Uh, ah, uh, namesake is like just a joke. I had no idea what I should choose as a name, and then namesake was like, okay, 
namesake is something that has the same name as you, but it has not the same name as me because it's not Simon. So it was a bit of a one-time joke. And um, yeah, why not? Let's see if he wants to exchange. And I need to play faster. Don't want to get in time trouble. Okay. Um, yeah, then let's be a bit more modest with my development. It's all right tricky because he might go for e4. Yeah. But maybe I can exchange his bishop. Now the rook, is, I mean, the h file is open, of course. It can be dangerous. It can be extremely dangerous. But now it's closed again. And I have maybe some pressure on the b file. Yeah. But I have also c5. Um, yeah, they are playing this nicely. I need to play faster. c5, and I need to connect to rooks by getting the bishop out. Bishop a6 would have also been a nice move, I guess. But I wanted to play this. I mean, old wisdom, once the position opens, um, my bishops will be nice. But I first need to get it open. I guess bishop h6, uh, bishop a6, rook f to b8, perhaps. Some pressure or rook c8 also looks interesting. Yeah, I guess. What's his plan? Knight to e3 or what? Okay, then let's play rook to c8. And let's see if that's a trap or not. Does he see blundering? No, I don't think so. Let's play this. Maybe I can play a4. And then both of us might have passed pawns. I didn't want to take on b3 because he could have taken on a5 and I didn't, you know, didn't trust the other thing. Oh, now he gets a breakthrough or what? Yeah, but I get this. At least I can, I can counter this. And here. Okay. Do I have an in between move, an intermezzo? No, I don't. But I get a pawn, right? One pawn up. And. Now is what is plan now? Ah, he wants to take the pawn, right? Ah, okay, bishop to c5. Yeah, okay, then. Then let's do this. The queen is not on this spot to be. Meta, Meta Zena with talking about uh, DK version rights. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, and of course, it makes sense uh, to counter your natural memory DK by uh, repeating stuff again. But the problem is that it's super hard to get this to an acceptable level because you're repeating again and you're repeating again and again and again. And um, this DK principle simply always applies. And this is a bit of a problem. So can I now play? Yeah, now I can play bishop to c5, right? Because I want to eliminate the defender of the of c4. And if I get c4, then it's it's starting to look grim for my opponent, I think. The question is, do I want to play a5, uh, a4 and a3 just to have a stable pawn there? Um, yeah. Can I take? No, I can. Of course, I cannot take on g3. Yeah, let's let's go here. And okay, attacking the rook. Like I would not see this. Then rook to a7. It's getting more and more of a time thing, right? Let's go h4. And I 
think I will exchange this. And now this will be interesting. Many pawn weaknesses. I guess I will simply gang, gang up on c4. I first play g, g6. Um, I will first play g6. And then I simply, and if he plays, I was, well, he can do this, but I will simply gang up on c4. And he should have too many pawn weaknesses, I hope. I mean, it's always tricky, but what do I want? I want this rook. Rook to a2 would be nice. Yeah, of course, you see that. Then let's try to, to, to exert pressure on these nice pawns here. Um, yeah, I might have rook, rook a4 might have been better to prevent g4. If he's stream sniping, then he would, of course, notice this. And this allows me. Oh, why did I do this? <laughs> I just planted a pawn because I thought it was defended. Oh my god. Well, this. Throws away a winning position, I'm afraid. Yeah. Now I can maybe still try to do something with G4. Yeah, of course. But. Um, yeah, the question is, that's problematic. Now he goes back, right? No, he doesn't go back, OK? I will gladly take this opportunity. But I'm afraid he might have something like a perpetual. Yeah. This looks like not the nicest thing. I could bait him. Okay, we'll simply check and then go back. Mm. No. Do I really want to? Yeah, now I think he is blundered. Because now he loses a pawn here. G3 is gone. And I get to F4. This looks better. And if I am at f4, then it looks rather grim for him. Yeah, this looks nice. Just a question how to play this. Is this good? Yeah. Is this good? No idea, or did I spoil the win here? Did I spoil the win here? I think it's still fine. I think it's still fine. And so, I mean, probably this is not even a win or something, yeah? So, yeah, but I get the pawn, right? Do I have something here? Most probably I don't. But wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, the problem is that you can always always do this, I guess. But let's try. Should be an elementary draw, I guess. Because you can simply question is whether I can 
Right somewhere. No. I guess this is this is a draw. And now he goes king to king to g2, right? Yeah, but now did he did he blunder now? No, <laughs> he takes and it's and it's a stalemate either way. No, it's not. No, 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 no. It's not stalemate. I'm a threatening mate on h on h7 and h2. Checkmate. Sorry. <sighs> what time is it? Twenty-six minutes over. Wow. Okay. Going back to it. Thank you very much for the game, Serious Lama. <sighs> Yep, um, I would not have tried to flag him, um, CP, CP card, but I um, would have accepted his draw offer if I would have really seen that he would have come below five seconds or 10 seconds or something. Um, so, um, yo, then any more questions? Um, doesn't look like it. Um, let's see. Then, yeah, I think the end game was super interesting, Bollwesen. Um, would be interesting to, to no. Um, oh, it, okay, that draw, wow. And then, yeah, my opinion on spaced repetition and chess from Beethoven on YouTube. Spaced repetition, of course, is uh, super useful because it simply takes, takes care of your um, memory decay in a bit of a scientific way. Because, I mean, there's this having house forgetting curve and everything. And um, this is simply uh, directed against this. So what Chessable is doing, I think, is really great. And what I'm just saying is that maybe um, there, there are also people who uh, say, yeah, maybe they, they are not there. If you're not in Chessable, then go on Chessable, <laughs> because I'm also using it. It's great. And But maybe there, there are some super tricky variations, and you feel um, it's one of my super difficult moves. And I mean, Chessable can also tell you what the difficult moves are. And so I think this still leaves a window open for memory techniques because um, sometimes it is simply a useful way to go. And it simply saves time, just to be clear, memory techniques save time uh, because you might need to learn a bit in the beginning, but with every skill, like with learning how to ride a bicycle, um, it also takes time in the beginning. But once you know how to ride a bicycle, you are faster than everyone going on foot. So um, it is simply something that um, after you have invested a bit time in the beginning with not with not such a steep learning curve, curve, um, it really saves time and energy. Because this feeling that oh, I need to look at these lines again and again and uh, click through all these boring moves or, or through these exciting and sharp moves, which have become boring because I've seen them the 20th time. Um, and this this feeling that you are forgetting things unless you etch it into your memory and you etch it into your brain like with knives. <clears throat> that, that this feeling is simply not, not there anymore because using memory techniques is not about looking at stuff 20 times like a um, uh, caveman, but it's about using your logic and your creativity and your associations and simply making strong connections that also take care of these structures in your brain. So as, as I said, I'm no neuroscientist, but it's simply um, proven in many studies that these techniques work and um, with uh, control groups and everything. And it makes sense. I mean, uh, it um, uses your uh, locational memory. And sure, it was always useful to know where the good stuff is and where the best prey is and where to find uh, the best food and everything. So you're simply using that. Let's see any more questions or next game. So next game, I would say, let's say, let's, let's play against the strongest of them all. And that I finally lose 2,500. Ooh. Also premium unrated, 2,547 rated. And I guess I will accept CP Koitat. Might well be my first loss today. Might very well be my first loss today. Let's see what happens. But I don't think I need to take it. That's a nice system that I like to play in Blitz. And it surely is also great for uh, longer time controls. 
Um, okay, so do. And Tarash mainline, and I guess I will leave my prepared moves soon, not to brief my future opponents too much on what my lines might be, but let's see. I am uh, reading uh, Twitch, I'm reading YouTube, and I'm reading Chess24 chat, MGDX 1959. So, um, uh, Meta, Meta, Zena, I don't have photographic memory, for sure not, and I also think that a photographic memory does not exist in the usual way, that you look at a page and that you know the page by every letter and every position of every letter after only a few seconds. I've never seen something like this, and I think nobody else has seen something like this. There was, of course, Kim Peek, the um, um, person who was the basis for the for the movie Rain Man, he supposedly could like scan pages, but he, he also had uh, rather severe um, asparagus and or even full blown autism. And um, yeah, this there is like always um, a trade off, I think. And um, I don't know. I need to make a move again. Sorry. And next question. Being so smart and memorable, how do you do in physical sports? OK, well, um, I feel flattered. Um, but I have no idea whether I'm smart and whether I am like memorable. That's like up to you. I should do more sports. Um, recently, I've lost a bit of weight due to changing my um, diet. So um, jogging, at least, is much easier, having a few kilograms less. And now, what should I do here? And yeah, I like football, but I've not played it for quite a long time. It's hard on, on, the, on the knees. I like table tennis. I've played tennis since I'm a young age, but not since a longer time. And now I will be blockading this square, which has nothing to do with physical sports. Um, a lack of sleep, chess King Kong definitely can affect um, your uh, memory. I think this is rather clear. But... Um, now let me see what am I doing here. Okay, I think I simply exchange. It's a defender of the d5 square. And yeah, I need to watch out because maybe I simply okay. He's aiming for c4, right? Maybe I just secure my d4 and then e e2 might be an option, maybe. After knight to c4, maybe a4. And the whole thing seems secure enough for now, at least. Knight to b2, I go queen to b3. I mean, he might then exchange on d4, but well, that's, that's life, right? An option might, might also be taking on e6 and bishop h3. Doesn't look that bad. But there's, of course, always the problem once I move my knight on d4 that the f6 bishop and the c8 rook are targeting my c3 knight. So, troublesome. Um, he's thinking for quite some time now. Of course, it would be perfect to go knight to e2 and then simply to take on e2. And ah, this is interesting now. Knight takes e6, takes e6, h3. Yeah, maybe it's bad. I don't know. But there are ideas of now taking on d5. Are there? Maybe. Yeah, hard to say. Yeah, but don't I have this now? And this? Okay, still no loss. Molo Yololi, um, our opening is the strongest party for chess game. 
Hard to say. I mean, I guess openings are the most accurate part of my chess game if I play the lines that, if I get the lines that I want to play. Um, and um, yeah, I guess other parts, I, I mean, I love simple positions. I have the feeling that I play best in end games. But uh, yeah, I like the end game. So with a few pieces and um, uh, Mick Mictal, no, I don't remember all the moves I made in this game because, as I said, uh, memory techniques is a voluntary skill. So you use it when you want to use it. And I simply did not care to try to memorize other moves I could. It wouldn't be um, a big deal. And maybe I even could re re reconstruct stuff now, usually direct after a game because of all your chess understanding. But there it's, it's all held uh, together. So um, this is like basically, but if I wanted, I could definitely do it. So time, um, oh, still 24 minutes. Um, are there maybe some really strong people here, much stronger than me? I think the, the strongest guy I ever played here was Jan, Jan Gustafsson with like 3,100 3, or so. And I, of course, lost against him. And yep, well, but why always play only strong people? Um, everybody should get a chance. Hard to say, but how about um, a 3-2? A 3-2 challenge, maybe. How about Yosem M? And if white, very nice. Let's play this again. No, um, I don't have a title of all reason. I have never played an ELO-rated tournament game. So um, I played one or two Blitz tournaments, I think, uh, when I was still weaker than, than I am now. Um, and the same for Rapid. But um, that's it. I would love to. Okay, this isn't this this, this Wesley Soul line? No, it isn't. Okay, if the queen now takes. Oh, yeah. My opponent somehow seems to know what he's doing. But what about simply removing the knight here, playing knight to c3, and simply claiming that. I like my position now. Already, castles would be a mistake because 96, yes, correct. Space advantage, d6 is weak. Yeah, okay. He wants to exchange everything, huh? But how about I prevent your castling, my friend? Knight to b6, uh, queen, queen to b6. I would play queen to d6, I think. And if he goes back, uh, yeah, okay. He's really into an end game. But this tells me that I should not go into an end game. Do I want to go into an end game? Yeah, well, let's, let's go into an end game. Maybe I can induce some pawn weaknesses. Do I exchange or do I go e4 and Oh, let's exchange. Let's, let's be super boring. Should not be enough, but well, who cares? Let's bring the king into the center and see what we can do. Okay, he wants to take care of his pawn problems. Yeah, the point is if, if I get an isolated pawn, then I haven't won anything. Yeah, but this should be an idea, right? Mm, no, it shouldn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. That's not very good. That's not very good. I mean, typical would be now king to f5. Yeah, he's he's preparing it. Sneaky guy. But let's try and see whether I can exchange rooks. Because the pawn weaknesses would remain. And the question is, what about this pawn endgame? 
Yeah, okay, but, but here I have enough Tempe, right? Here I should be able to get the opposition. And it's usually in these situations, if you get the opposition, either, either way you, you win. A6, A3, King to C6, and of course I always go the other side. And I guess I simply win the D5 pawn, right? King to e6, king to c5, king to f5, king takes d5, king to g4, king to e4, king to h3. Yeah, or do I? Let's let's count. e6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ah, okay, wow. Yeah, then. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, let's see. No, no, I'm, I'm, um, I think I can simply get the G6 pawn. I should simply be able to get the g6 pawn when uh, if he goes king f5, g4, and so on. And then my f4 pawn runs and is faster. So um, taking, I think taking a6 and b5 after king king f5, king d5 does not work. Because I think he would queen one. Uh, he's, uh, but the problem is, wait, I take, he takes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, one. Um, I am counting the moves for both sides until queening. If I if I take on h4, king takes on f4. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And um, I should win this. King to. I should be quicker. And now I give check here and my pawn runs. Okay. Yeah, counting is important, my friends. Uh, this had nothing to do with uh, memory techniques. This was like just um, just uh, showing after uh, pawn pawn takes h4 how much moves his his king would need um, with um, and and his pawn and it was 10 and how many moves my king would need to take um, a6 and b5 and plus my pawn moves and it was 10 for him and nine for me. So I it was earlier and then the and then I just assumed that I would win the queen end game and. To be super honest, only after queening, I saw that sure I have the super easy way to win the queen end game by by um, checking on h8, and then on g8, and then exchanging. Okay, let's see any any more questions. Um, so let's see. Yes, science absolutely. Um, here, a question: Who who is this guy from Chris and Pedro? I am Sam Reinhardt two times world memory champion in the memory league format. Um, having a course on code chess uh, next weekend and the weekend after on chess and memory, remembering chess moves, remembering chess ideas and motives. And um, yeah, I am doing a banter blitz and talking about chess and memory and playing some people. And um, here, yeah, proper diet is absolutely important for um, a healthy memory. Yeah, um, dark, dark engine, yeah. I mean, it's always a bit tricky. These are things like, okay, if you don't have a proper diet, then your memory is worse. I have no idea about this. I just know that with a proper diet, I feel better. And it's not about losing weight. It's just about um, not not feeling so, so not, not like feeling a bit fresher. And I think this like really helps. Okay, um, let's... Um, dum, dum, dum. 
Let's see if there are other questions here. Um, no, and let's play one more. Maybe a strong one again. Um, yeah. Let's go for Avenge 05, an unrated game, Nikita Lebedev. This might be, might definitely be a great chance for my first loss. But let's see. Again, the London system. I hope I did not play this guy. I did not notice it. Um, yeah. Um, problem is after bishop f5, I think, takes on c4. Here, here. Let's try this. Um, if uh, the question is to, to me by Chin Yan Yen, where do you come from, bro? I'm from Germany. And by the way, I love Vietnam. I was there in 2019. It was such a great place. I was there for a TV show, um, bragging, bragging, and it was so fantastic there. Um, okay, B, B3. B3, but I think now I can play this. Now? Yeah, okay, well. Ah. Yeah, but I think now I simply have an interesting position. I think I might grab the bishop pair just to make sure. And then let's see what happens. Yeah, the problem is if I take now, then he takes with the e pawn, right? f6 is risky, but is it risky? f6, g4 takes, and he can't take my knight because he loses the knight. Yeah, well, then I take, okay. And yeah, h6 is hanging. And if I play a, uh, h7, if I play that, then, yeah, well, it's not so comfortable. But maybe I simply castle long. g4 might be an interesting idea. Or this, yeah. Oh, this move. H7 is hanging. H7 is hanging. But I guess I simply, yeah, that's a question. Hard game, tough game. I can't lose E6, so let him just take it. And then I will castle long and see what goes. Yep. And yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the first blunder of the evening. Yeah, absolutely. I was looking at the, the chess position trainer software. Um, no, I don't use this for my for my training. But let's see, okay. This is definitely my first loss of the day. Oh, yeah, okay. Good. Fine for me. Bring my king a bit into safety. And now maybe I can. Maybe I can create some confusion. Oh no, I still have looking the second fork. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Still still fighting for a little bit. But just because maybe my minor pieces might be interesting with an attack. But if this does not materialize, then it's over. I just noticed I'm using the same rhythm. I used the same rhythm as Jan Gustafsson, then it's over. And because it's true, it would be over. Yeah, but this is starting to give me a few chances. I mean, sure, he's totally winning, but g3. And I mean, chances is a bit much, sure, but one should never lose hope. At least I managed to make it a bit murky. 
queen to b4 and queen to h4, uh, queen to b4 and queen to h4 would be would be extremely pleasant. Maybe I can trick him. But how? How can I trick this strong player? I don't think I can. Oh, this is this is opening up some chances. If he leaves the fourth rank, maybe he leaves the fourth rank and I'm lucky. But I don't think. Yeah, but f4, and I still have queen to uh, queen to h4. It's not so easy for him. I think independent of what he does, I mean, sure he can give a check, but giving a check is simply. Yeah, but now rook move, right? <sighs> rook move, right? Yeah, but how about a decoy? Tactical maneuver, a decoy. <sighs> I mean, Lawrence Trent. Never underestimate Lawrence Trent. Oh, yeah, this was problematic. But I guess Lawrence Trent has jinxed my stream. And now queen to h3, right? Yeah, but still murky. Still at least a little bit murky. But I guess rook to, rook to e1 or something. Yeah, sure. Will he be baited by f5? Yeah, but he still he simply he simply goes there. Let me give one more check and then resign. Thanks for the game after two after two over overlooked forks. Okay, that's all forks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess it's good to get your embarrassing loss out of the system at the end of the stream. No, it would be better in, and not in the beginning. Uh, yes, Schach der Rache, Rache Schach. Um, Oh, we're talking about addiction. It's about smoking or was? Yeah, I mean, addiction is a difficult topic that I won't delve into now. Um, are there any more questions? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I hope I made it as hard for him as possible under under pressure. But um, um, yeah, great, great questions by Ich Nuta. Um, yeah, uh, does it make it easier for you to be social? Do you remember events, anecdotes, news? I mean, this is something that you can use for any kind of um, situation. And of course, you can use it. Um, and of course, you can use it um, for uh, memorizing names, for memorizing details about people, if you meet people at a social location. So this is definitely helpful. And I see Kitches. I'm not sure whether this is uh, my friend Ben, but if it's Ben, hello, Ben. And I've definitely run into people who think memorizing opening moves is a bad idea. And um, it may is also. Um, um, ah, hello, Johannes Buto. Um, greetings to Stefan. Wonderful. Uh, great to see you here. And um, yeah, I mean, memorizing opening moves is always such a thing. What I don't like is this artificial dichotomy between memory and understanding. People say, yeah, you don't need to memorize opening moves. You just have the ideas in your head and then you can play. Sure. The ideas are, OK, great. It's you, Ben. Great. Hi. Uh, you uh, Sure. If you only memorize opening moves, this is like, getting a map for I'm a blind man. Yeah, this like doesn't help because you, you need to understand chess. You need to get all of these ideas, technical motives, a feeling for the positions that you are playing. Nobody says that understanding is not the major part of chess. But what, what I'm saying is at a certain level, at, at least at I'm a certain level, okay, that's my alarm that we are done here in five minutes. I'm at least at um, a certain level, opening moves are important. And I think chess is a game of understanding, but chess is also a game of details and a game of um, accuracy. And if you are, if you and your opponent have the same um, understanding of the game, 
the player who knows their opening moves deeper and who is later out of book has the better chance. I think this is hard to dispute. And you can compare it to two boxers. Let's say you have two world champions in boxing, one like in heavyweight and one in welterweight. Welterweight is up to 170 pounds, I think. Sorry if I completely bungle this now. Maybe it's less, but I just know that Mayweather boxed in this. And um, heavyweight is much higher, I think, starting at 220 or at least at 200 pounds. And if those are the two best of their generation, um, the heavyweight will most probably defeat the other guy because they have more mass. An even more extreme example would be simply um, yeah, someone from like cruiserweight or something because they're not too uh, slobby. It's like about weight. Uh, having more opening moves, it's like having the, the same ability. You won't lose any of your understanding, but you have more weight in your fight and mass is important. Um, and okay, more questions. Definitely, it also helps for, for end games because with these techniques, of course, you can uh, memorize any kind of sequence of moves and end games sometimes. Um, I mean, look at the rook end games in uh, Turetsky's end game manual and all of the um, additions there by uh, Jim Miller and um, the, the others. It is crazy. I think Evan Lemie also made some addition there for uh, the rook end games. It is crazy, and there are so many different rook end games. And it is super helpful for uh, keeping apart very similar positions and also for keeping track about branching variations. And it, it is simply in uh, the end game. I mean, if you know the moves in the end game, you not only get a better position, you get a win. So knowing your moves in the end game is even, is even better. I mean, if you get a better position in uh, the opening, of course, then you increase your chances of uh, winning, at least statistically. But the end game, at least as important. It's it like also works for ideas, for middle game plans, for, for any kind of information. It's a very flexible tool. And um, it's like just how much time you want to dedicate to it. And the super cool thing is memorizing 500 moves um, compared to memorizing 50 moves takes around 10 times longer. But if you are trying to memorize 500 moves with your natural memory, it takes more than 10 times longer than uh, 50 moves because you are forgetting everything. You need to, you, uh, need to repeat, you need to repeat, you, and you need to repeat. And um, that's, as I think, as a bit of a closing statement. Let's see if I have time for one more. I don't think I have time for one more, and I think it's better to finish with answering questions. Um, I think this is the, the most important advantage that memory techniques give you in chess, that if you have memorized these moves with these techniques, of course, there is also still a bit of decay, but it happens much later and it's much more stable and it is much more um, robust, ro robust, it's much more robust um, against uh, any kind of nervousness or blackout or anything because you have it in a visual way. Yeah, let's just check. I have two more minutes. Maybe I get one more question done. Uh, thank you. Thank you that you liked it, Durga Prasad Halwai. Um, I try to make it entertaining, playing, talking, and um, yeah. Um, FFM Tim was asking, are you going to do something on the German Chess24 channel in the future? That's up to Chess24. If they liked what I was doing today and if the real numbers were I'm okay and if you guys are giving them feedback, then I can gladly do something also on um, a German stream. I very much enjoyed it today. And thank you all for watching. Let me just check whether I have still a question on the banter blitz chat. Still about addiction here of uh, chess addiction, but I guess it's more of Dostoevsky, the greatest writer. Yes, maybe, um, uh, maybe not, um, but of course he's really great. Thank you, Mick, um, that you think I did a very good job. Thank you, Music Rale. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, my uh, to show all my strategy for memo camp chess pieces is um, a bit uh, different. Uh, but I mean, I think I also this is also part of a competition some time ago. But it is a bit different. It's about more about the locations of the pieces and not about moves. And yeah, thank you. I uh, forget about Ott. And thank you, MGDX1959, for having me. Thank you. And um, I can thank all of my viewers. 
thanks a lot. And these few, many, I have no idea that stayed with me. I hope it was interesting for you. And please excuse me if I pitch my coaches course again. The first course has already sold out next weekend. There will be a second one, uh, 24th and 25th of April. And if this also sells out, maybe, but nothing has been uh, decided yet other ones. And I'm also giving these courses privately. So you can also contact me if you are interested. And if you, are, and if you have questions, you can just send questions to my account here also, and also to my email address. And I also have a homepage, simonreinhardt.de and .com, which is still in the build up. I, it will be a completely new soon. But independent of this, I hope you had fun. And I hope it was great. Yes, it's a boot camp. It's a boot camp on coaches. And it's a total of uh, three hours over two days. And um, independent of this, maybe you can check out coaches.com also. It's a great site. And um, thank you all for watching. I had fun. I hope you had fun. And maybe if the feedback from your side and the viewing numbers and your messages to Chess24 or whatever are good enough, then we will see each other again. Have a very nice evening, day, morning, wherever you are in the world. And bye-bye. <laughs>